Today I'm in Wales and I'm in absolute heaven. Why? Because I'm at a huge camper van gathering. I just love looking at all these other vans. It's so nice to see people loving their vehicles and it's so nice to see what other people are doing with their vehicles as well. I get a serious case of camper van envy. Let me go inside. Yeah, jump in. I love this. I feel like I'm in the Waikiki bar <laughs> in Hawaii. I'll be showing you the extreme lengths that some people go to to personalise their own vans. And I'll reveal how to make the best camper van curry using the freshest local ingredients. And the reason I'm using lamb is because I'm in Wales. The country's famous for it. And my van and I face the judges. Initially, looking at it, I'd, I'd say it's very, very nice. I've travelled just over 250 miles from the Lake District over the border into Wales and the small town of Caldicott. After a really long drive from the lakes, I'm here in Monmouthshire in South Wales. I'm going to a festival, but not just any festival. This is a camper van festival. Festivals like these are where the good, the bad and the ugly from the camper van world come together to celebrate camper van culture. I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to enter the van for the show and shine. Now that is the competition for the finest van in the festival. Having done nearly two and a half thousand miles without a wash, that's the van, not me. If I'm going to win this competition, I'm going to have to get my rubber gloves on and get scrubbing. This could well prove a challenge too far. The festival, that's held in the shadow of Caldecott Castle, is only in its third year, but has already become hugely popular. Oh, here we go, this is it. This year, a staggering 1,500 campervans had made the trip. My van and I were in for some stiff competition. Wow, look at these. This is the show and shine field, which hopefully we're gonna be allowed onto tomorrow, when I'm all polished up and looking lovely and uh, if I'm to stand a chance of winning a prize. If you ever wanted proof of the camper van's popularity, then this is surely it. This place was extraordinary, like a camper van museum, with examples dating back over half a century. This is an early bay, looking very pretty. We've got T5s, nice T25. The much sought after early models, built in the 50s and 60s, are known as splitties because they have a split windscreen. Some of them actually hinge outwards. Then there are the bays, of which mine is a late model. From here they evolve right up to the luxurious T5 model of today. Finally, one of my absolute favourites, the Rat Look. These are vans that are made to look old and tatty, complete with rust and faded paintwork. I just love looking at all these other vans, it's so nice to see people loving their vehicles and it's so nice to see what other people are doing with their vehicles as well see how much people care for them and take time over them and look after them and make them what they are which is classic vehicles and i'm going to have to do some serious polishing if i'm going to stand a chance tomorrow but before i got the cleaning equipment out i found my camping spot parked up and headed off with one mission to check out the competition <laughs> isn't this the coolest thing you've ever seen it's too old VWs, backs cut off, stuck together to make a mobile dining room. I love it! Wow, this is cosy! Look at that! Excellent! And you tow it behind your van, you can kip in that one, cook in this one. And this is another one of my favourites, simply because it just belongs in the age that it that it was born. It's, it looks like it hasn't changed a bit. As well as being the height of retro chic, this van also has an ingenious cooking arrangement. Cook is under the front seat. Yeah. That's intriguing. Yeah, most times, most people don't, I mean, even most of my friends don't even know it's there. Can you show me how it works? Yeah, sure. All you do is, is lift the seat up out of the way and drop it down. 
and as you drop it down, if you've got your gas left on, it cuts the gas off. Wandering around the festival, it was easy to understand how some owners become obsessed. But for many, the camper van is simply a chance to sample a lifestyle that few other vehicles can bring. You get to drive and cherish these wonderful old vans, and the family can come too. I'd seen enough great vans to realise how strong the competition was. My trusty old van, by comparison, was looking a bit, well, tired. If I was to stand any chance in tomorrow's competition, I was going to have to give her a thorough clean. I don't carry a hoover in my camper van, so it was onto my hands and knees with my dustpan and brush. It's amazing what you pick up on a 2,000 mile tour around the country. Sand from all the beaches, dead insects, and of course, crumbs from all the cooking I'd done. And boy, had I done a lot of cooking. From foraged mushrooms, to fresh honeycomb, oh. clawing out crab meat, there we go, to creating a super-sized frittata from a giant egg. Wow. My campervan kitchen has been hard at work. I would say that's just about perfect. Oh, it's delicious. After an hour or so of elbow work, I'd got the van back to the condition she was in when I bought her. Dirty, dirty, dirty. It's amazing how much rubbish I've managed to accumulate. But it was obvious that parts of the interior hadn't had a proper clean for decades. So I used a little camper van tip. I mixed white wine with bicarb of soda to make a green cleaner that really cuts through the grime. I wonder when the last time it was this van saw a damp cloth. With both my energy and the light fading, I went off in search of some food. Cooking would trash my van again, so it was the perfect excuse. Much as I like to cook, this was going to be the first night off on my journey, so I thought I'd have a celebratory curry. I saw the sign, cooking camper. It's a bit of a compromise. Yeah. Because um, on one hand, it'd be great to cook in the van. Yeah. Um, obviously a bit limited for space. Yeah. But if I was cooking in the van, I couldn't then use the van for pleasure. And right, if you have okay. a van, you want to do more than just work in your van. You want to go surfing in your van. You want to sleep, you want to have pleasure trips. Can I have a look? Yeah, of course you can. Very nice. Do you use it as an everyday vehicle then? I get used 305 days of the year. Yeah? Because um, apart from doing shows, I have a lunchtime delivery round. I really, and it Which I do. You do so it snow, ice, it gets a day off on Christmas Day. Right. Um, but yeah, it's every, every single day. How many people do you feed, do you think, in a day at a festival like this? In a day at a festival like this, I will probably feed anywhere between 100 and 200 people. Well, how do you do it? Um, we'll have to prep at home. Yeah. Things like onions, chop them all the night before in the plastic tubs, into the, um, the cool boxes. Yes. It's planning. That's all it is, really. Okay. Oh, look. Looks like you might have some okay. customers. Hello, guys. I bow down to the superior cooking and organisational abilities of this man. Can I give you a hand? Well, if, you, if you're offering to help, far yeah. be for me to say no. Just grab yourself some gloves. Yeah, OK. Right. For the next batch of uh, the vegetable curry, there's just some potatoes. Righty-ho. That need, uh, need chopping up. Like me, Steve isn't a trained chef, but has successfully been cooking out of his camper van for the past three years using locally sourced produce. And his food smelt so good that it really got my creative juices going. I've had an idea uh, that I would like to make uh, a lamb rogan josh so with lots of fresh tomatoes. Sounds good. Onions. Yeah. And get some Welsh lamb in there. What are you using for heat? I've got chilli flakes actually. Chilli flakes are great. Yeah. So I think it's fine if you use chilli powder, everything gets coated in chilli and it just hits your tongue straight away. Yes. Whereas if you use fresh chillies or chilli flakes, you taste the meat and if you're using great Welsh lamb, you want to taste the lamb and then you get the heat. Great come through. Great tip. So basically you're using local ingredients, yeah. fresh ingredients, cooked with love. Yes. Out of the back of a camper. Absolutely. On a glorious summer's day. Is there a better way of earning a living? <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> right, congratulations to you thank on you. a really good lifestyle. It sounds Super, great. Yeah, brilliant. It looks wonderful. Chicken curry, rice Thanks. and lentil dill. Thank you, I shall enjoy, enjoy this. Night I'm off. going around the other side. I headed off to enjoy my dinner in one of the last remaining patches of evening sunlight. That's actually really good. And do you know what? It's a relief for once. I haven't had to catch it, cook it, kill it, chase after it, go out on a boat to get it, pick it off the beach, rummage around in the mud, get up to here in 
dirt and grime and just go over there and enjoy great camper van food from someone else's camper van. Perfect. I finished my curry and had an early night, ready for judgment day tomorrow. Still to come, will my van sweep the competition aside and triumph in the show and shine? And I'll be showing you how to make the best camper van curry. And will my special guest give the thumbs up to my camper van curry creation? It was a busy day ahead and it was competition time for my trusty van. But I also had a curry to cook and needed some ingredients. Luckily, I'd been tipped off that the nearby town of Usk had a farmer's market where you could buy just about anything. I only hoped they had Welsh lamb for my curry. I've got my shopping list and I'm heading off to the farmer's market to pick up some fresh ingredients for a very special festival curry. The farmer's market really was as good as I'd been told. The range of produce was staggering. There was everything from locally grown veggies to locally produced salami and even a stall selling Welsh wine, of all things. Can I try some of the, of the dry? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Well, funnily enough, the first thing I found at the farmer's market is alcohol-based. <laughs> but only a little soupçon. That's lovely, I'll take a case. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Thank you. I've got myself some Welsh cider. Welsh perry, which is very nice. And some Welsh wine. Delicious. Wow, guinea fowl. They look wonderful, but probably not very easy to cook in a camper van. All very nice, but it was curry ingredients that I needed. Luckily, the next stall was a great help. Mango pickle, that looks beautiful. All homemade. I picked out some garam masala and sugar-coated fennel seeds. I was on a roll. Right, I've spotted the veg man. The secret to making the best Rogan Josh is by using stacks of tomatoes. That many tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to measure tomatoes. Like that. I was going to make a lamb Rogan Josh because I know that the local Welsh lamb enjoys an excellent reputation. So when I spied the organic meat stall, my heart leapt. Aha, lamb, my main ingredient. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I'm glad I found you because I'm looking for some Dice lamb to make a curry. That's um, 350 grams. Okay. Now tell me about your lamb. How far have you travelled today to get here? Just about 20 miles. About 20 miles. Okay. So I probably wouldn't be able to get any more local than this. I don't think so. No. That's great. Okay. Job done. It was time to hit the road. Well, I've pretty much got everything I need. So it's back to the festival. But there was one thing I'd managed to sneak into my shopping bag without the camera crew seeing. And something I certainly wouldn't be able to make myself in the van. One thing about camper van living, you've got no oven. So you'll have to wave goodbye to those baked goods. Unless, of course, you find them at a place like this. And I'll tell you something, there's absolutely no way I'm taking any chances with this in the fridge as I drive along. That's a proper taste of summer. There was no time to waste. The van still wasn't as clean as I'd like and the start of the show and shine was looming. Let's get on with it. I'd brushed out and polished the interior last night, now it was time to wash the paintwork. But because I was on my own, unlike the other camper vanners, and didn't have my usual army of family and friends to help me, I needed to call in some backup. I've seen the competition, and my kind of amateur Sunday afternoon cleaning efforts. I don't think it's going to be enough. So I called in the cavalry for a bit of extra elbow grease. Thank goodness for that. I've got a bit of help. How's it going? How's it going? Glad you, you could right? make it. That's yeah. right, no problem. 
a uh, bit grubby. Yeah. I'll do all the paintwork. I don't know if you are going to be able to yeah. help me get the wheels.